The solemn silence in the library is broken only by a quiet cough or the sound of a chair scraping against the floor or perhaps the soft rustle of paper. Suddenly, a strange sound of munching intrudes. Someone is eating where eating is sacrilegious. Narendra Jadav, renowned economist, educator and social scientist, tells us the story. He was a brilliant and extraordinarily hard-working student. When he was working on his uh, PhD in Columbia University, he would be the first one to arrive at the library and he would be the last one to leave. And he would not take any break and uh, he loved the books and he would, all the time, he would be concentrating on his studies. He would study practically all night. One time, he decided not to take break even for lunch. And whatever meager lunch that he used to carry to the library, he did not want to waste time in going out to eat. So he ate his lunch in the library itself, which was reported to the librarian. And promptly they took action and he was penalized. And the action taken was to prohibit him from entering the library for one week. And young Bhimra Ambedkar could not stand it. He wept like a baby. And he said, you can give me any punishment, but for God's sake, don't keep me away from my books. Today, almost a century later, a statue of that man, the man who did not take a lunch break, adorns that library. Balchandra Mangekar, noted agricultural economist, speaks of his eminence. Today, Ambedkar has become icon across the world. London School of Economics and Columbia University, both the libraries have only statue of only one Indian in their libraries, that is Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Till date, Dr. Ambedkar is the only Indian economist who could get PhD in economics from Columbia University in 1917 and 1921, DSC from economics from London School of Economics. First was evolution of provincial finance and second was the problem of the rupee. Economist in Ambedkar is absolutely critically important and the monumental writing that Dr. Ambedkar has written practically relating to each and every economic problem facing contemporary India. The greatness of Ambedkar's writing is that despite the fact that he has written everything before independence, his vision, the freshness of his writing, his analytical approach to the problem is so fresh that they throw light even today on the contemporary problems of Indian nation. The 21st century pays tribute to this remarkable individual by observing his birth anniversary in 2016 at the United Nations for the first time in an attempt to combat inequalities to achieve the sustainable development goals set by the UN for the millennium. On the 125th birth anniversary of B.R. Ambedkar, popularly known as Baba Sahib Ambedkar, we will look beyond his image as the architect of the Indian constitution and his many other intellectual achievements in public life, which are enumerated briefly by Sukhdev Thorat, chairman of the Indian Council of Social Science Research, ICSSR. Dr. Ambedkar's contributions, one is that uh, as a member of the planning commission in 1942 and 46, he was a minister and as a member, he helped in developing the economic plan for India, which was later on incorporated into the first five plan. But as a member of the labor minister, one of his single most contributions is the development of irrigation and power policy in this country. Whatever exists as a ministry of water and power is his creation. 
So he built Damodar. He was instrumental in Hirakun Dam and Son River. For labor, of course, most of the laws were laid down by him, including the first employment exchange, which was set up in Calcutta. The scope of his achievements is impressive. The fact that he achieved what he did, coming from the lowest rung of Indian society, a Dalit, an untouchable, makes it even more so. In fact, this is a life of profound penury and a great deal of suffering. Valerian Rodriguez, ICSSR National Fellow at Mangalore University. His experiences of childhood that he has himself written of, the experiences of untouchability, and how he had to spend time on the road because the cartman would not like to take him in the cart, or the waterman would not actually give him water. Baba Saheb Ambedkar was only a little child when his mother died. He lived a life of penury and social ostracism of which he speaks. The collection of autobiographical writings was ultimately titled Waiting for a Visa, which formed part of the 13 volumes of his collected works. Caste discrimination is described in the Ghat journey of the siblings from Satara to Koregaon. The second part describes his experience in school, sitting in a separate area, picking up his gunny sack to take home so no one was obliged to touch it, to clean the floor, and waiting for a peon to give him water if he was thirsty. No higher caste peon would do that for fear of defilement. No peon, no water. Narendra Jadav remarks. He was a very handsome little boy. His name was Bimrao, but he was called Bhiva. And he was a heavy-set, handsome boy who was extremely obstinate and cantankerous, and he fought with everyone. That is how he was as a little boy. Bhimrao Ambedkar went to the school in Mumbai, the Elphiston uh, High School, and he became the first Dalit boy to pass the matriculation exam. And at that time, his father was very keen on Bhimrao working hard, and what he would do is that he would work all night, always. And that stayed throughout his life, or a student life at least. His father took him in hand. He was a strict disciplinarian who trained the boy to study hard, for he believed that education was the only way to overcome the disadvantage that they were born into. <laughs> Baba Sahib's Kismet, his destiny, too changed. He was fortunate to have a godfather, K.A. Dada Keluskar. Narendra Jadav comments. They were staying in a small place called Dabakchar in Parel uh, of central Mumbai. And there they were living in one room. There was no place to study. So he would always go and study in a garden. And there was uh, a social worker and teacher who noticed this boy always engrossed in studying. And that man, his name was uh, Keruskar. He played a very important role in the life of Bhimrao Ambedkar. He organized, when Bhimrao passed his matriculation, he arranged his first felicitation. And at that time, Keluskar presented the young Bhimrao with a book on Buddha written by Keluskar himself. And that had a tremendous effect on the little boy. So as a student, he was very hardworking. And what happened was, teacher Keluskar took him to meet Maharaja Sayaji Rao Gaikawad. This Maharaja Baroda gave him scholarship first for college education in Mumbai and later 
he was given a scholarship to go abroad to continue his studies from Columbia University in the United States. He went over to London and got himself admitted into London School of Economics for the degree of Doctor of Science and also registered himself as a student of law for the Barrister at Law degree in Gray's Inn in London. Baba Sahib's first experience of freedom from the stigma of untouchability was in the West, in the USA, at Columbia University, where he could interact as another human being, a brilliant one, on equal terms. It was exhilarating. Valerian Rodriguez remarks, We have the experiences that he has of studying in the different institutions and the relationship that he builds up with people like Edwin Seligman, who was his uh, supervisor at the Columbia University, and uh, Professor John Dewey, who was his favorite teacher. And this relationship is intense in the sense that Ambedkar begins to see Edwin Seligman as his exemplar and begin to dress himself and begin to project his public person in the way Edwin Seligman tried to do it and try to be reflective like John Dewey was throughout his life. In fact, Seligman was so fascinated with Ambedkar that he recommends him to Sidney Webbs to take him to London School of Economics. He was well on his way to becoming the man in the blue suit. Milind Awad, who teaches at the Center for English Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University, provides a thumbnail sketch of Baba Sahib Ambedkar as a young man. Ambedkar was very emotional and sensitive person. He used to stay in Rajgraha. There is very important memory by Dhananjay Kiel when that Rajgraha was confiscated by bank officers because he took loan and because of that he had to surrender his house. He was looking at Ma Sahib and he was actually crying or he was very emotional. So he was emotional about the fact that how he will be able to store those books which were preserved in that house. Ambedkar had love for clothes and books. He used to like good clothes, tie suit, coat, boat. I think this is very important message. Books and clothes, it's something which will compose them socially and politically. Baba Sahib Ambedkar was a study in contrasts. Nitin Tagade with the Indian Institute of Dalit Studies remarks. Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar was not a simple man. He was quite difficult to understand. He was like a coconut. Harder at the outside, but smooth inside. Narendra Jadav. He was a dog lover, and in his personal life in uh, Delhi, where he stayed, he would always have his dogs, and he would not eat uh, before the dog was fed. And uh, his assistant called Rattu has written uh, several incidents which showed how he was a uh, lover of dogs. Chandrabhan Prasad, senior journalist and thinker. Once uh, in the city of Nagpur, few Dalits into small businesses went to see him and introduced themselves as business people. He said, you get out of this business line. They said, why? We are making money. He says, in our country, business people cheat their customers. I don't want my followers to cheat anybody. So it is better that you do something else but not business. They said, we promise we will not cheat anybody. One of them said, I am Halwai. I make pakodes and samosas and all that. He said, you must certainly stop this business. He said, why? He said, you keep frying pakodes in the same oil for hours, adulterate food, this causes health problems. He said, I also promise that I will not use any adulterated item. So I wonder, has any leader ever told his followers to rather suffer than harm others. Nitin Tagade also enumerated his many and varied interests. Dr. Ambedkar was a student in his whole life. He was fond of learning Sanskrit, but he could not be allowed to do that. 
He had also fond of music, painting, which he learned in his late fifties. He learned violin, painting professionally. He also sketched Buddha's one picture. Baba Sahib's violin teacher used to tell about Baba Sahib that he is an excellent student. He asked all the literature related to the violin so that he can understand what violin is, how to play. Baba Sahib used to like a simple food. He used to like having chapati made by jawar and simple curry. And he himself was a good cook. He used to serve food to his friends who visited him, guests, by preparing himself. He had admiration for Palwankar Balu, who was the best bowler at his time. Baba Sahib was not a serious man. He used to make people laugh by using his sense of humor. Prakash Ambedkar, former member of parliament and a grandson of Baba Sahib, adds. He used to play cricket match, then he used to play football. And many other games uh, which came in that way of when he was staying in that Tabak Chak, the shanty towns as they call it. So whatever games were there, he used to play all these games. And he enjoyed playing these games. But he felt uh, very bad when he used to go. Books were Baba Sahib's passion from early childhood. Nitin Tagade recalls how Ambedkar's father encouraged him. He used to demand books from his father for reading purposes. Their economic condition was not so sound, but his father was so generous, he used to borrow money from his relatives and purchase books so that he can read more and more. Sukhdev Thorat remarks, this is a story written by Rattu, one of his private secretary in Delhi, that uh, he left him in the evening at 6, 7 o'clock. And he worked throughout the night. And when Rattu came in the morning, he looked at Rattu and he said, you are still standing here. Rattu says, Baba Sahib, I went back, night is over and this is early morning next day. I mean, we rarely get an example of a person who has finished MA, PhD, DSC, Barrett Law within a period of five years. So I think these are the, some of the examples of his uh, industrious and dedicated reading and writing. Anand Raj Ambedkar, a grandson of Baba Sahib, speaks of his grandfather. As a human being, Baba Sahib is above everything. He has been humiliated in school. He has been humiliated at Badoda. And many times he has been humiliated because of his caste. Till he has loved this country. And he has said, I am Indian first and Indian last. He has come up with very hard work, I can say. And because of that, he was knowing what are the poverty, what are the difficulty to facing by poor people. And that is why his life has been shaped like this. And he has done so much thing. Instead of going for a good job, he himself decided to do something for poor and downtrodden people. Even his last day, up to that time he was reading and writing. And last day he has finished his very important book, that is the Buddha and his Dhamma, in the late evening. He has done such a good work in that book. Chandrabhan Prasad he was a Buddhist, but he was not a monk. So he would tell his followers that all religions have two types of disciplines. One set of disciplines for the monks, for the priest. That's a very rigid discipline. But there is another set of discipline for the followers, for the grihast. And he would all the time say, do you know the meaning of Buddha? They would say, tell us, Baba Sahib, always walk the middle path. Buddha. How did Baba Sahib Ambedkar see himself? When he was ill and recovering in Bombay, his doctors advised that he should find a companion who was a good cook and would look after him. She should also have some medical knowledge. He found one, but he could not accept the thought of having a strange woman live in his home. But if she married him, that would be quite proper. His wife, Ramabai, had died in 1935 after a long illness. During the 1940s, 
His monumental work in drafting the Indian constitution was over but left him exhausted. He suffered from lack of sleep, had neuropathic pain in his legs and was diabetic. He found Dr. Sharda Kabir. He wrote to her about himself in 1948. I'm a difficult man. Ordinarily, I'm quiet as water and humble as grass. But when I get into temper, I'm ungovernable and unmanageable. I'm a man of silence. There is charge against me that I don't speak to women, that is other women, but I don't even speak to men unless they are my intimates. I'm a man of moods. At times I'm very serious. At times I'm full of humor. My companions have to bear the burden of my austerity and asceticism. I like art and have a great sense of aesthetics. My books have been my companions. They are dearer to me than my wife and children. Morally, I'm intractable and do not tolerate any lapses from strict rules of morals. I've recounted these facts about myself to give you some idea of what a difficult customer you have to deal with. Evidently, you're not worried about all this. You perhaps think that as any scratching and biting cats and dogs come together, so in the same way we too by scratching and biting shall come together. I wish you all success. They were married on 15th of April 1948 at his home in Delhi and she adopted the name Savita Ambedkar. She looked after him till his death in December 1956. The wheel had come full circle. Savita Ambedkar was a Brahmin. Balchandra Mangekar comments on Baba Saheb's views on intercaste marriage. Dr. Ambedkar argued that intercaste marriage is the only solution to the abolition of caste. When Ambedkar prepared his lecture for Jatpat Todak Mandal in 1936, which is then published as The Annihilation of Caste, where Dr. Ambedkar categorically argued that intercaste marriage is the only solution mm. for the abolition of the caste system because it results into fusion of the blood there is another alliance let us call it also intercaste mentioned by rajmohan gandhi historian and grandson of mahatma gandhi which was extremely fruitful he recalls in his recent book founding fathers i quote ambedkar's partnership from 1947 to 1950 with Gandhi, Nehru, Patel and the Indian National Congress which enabled a brilliant dalit to work with a caste hindu majority in the constituent assembly to produce a constitution assuring equality to all citizens in India was an astonishing achievement unquote if baba sahib saw himself as an angry man so did others when he met gandhi 22 years his senior for the first time ambedkar was made to wait gandhi he was told was teaching a foreign journalist how to use the charkha narendra jadav mahatma gandhi wrote a letter to him saying that i want to meet you please tell me whether i should come over to you or you can come and meet me ambedkar immediately responded that i will come to see you and that meeting took place in mani bhavan in mumbai when ambedkar reached there at the designated time he was made to wait for quite some time and mahatma gandhi was teaching a german reporter how to work on the spinning wheel charkha and outside ambedkar was fuming and he was about to explode when he was called in so and they started talking and the opening line was gandhi ji said dr ambedkar i am told that uh, you have been consistently speaking and writing against me i have been working against untouchability from the time when you were not even born immediate response of dr ambedkar was that all old people take refuge of their age when they have nothing else to say and mahatma gandhi was taken aback believe me nobody in their right mind at that stage had the guts to say that to mahatma gandhi and that meeting was very stormy and ambedkar uh, actually stormed out of that meeting
handsome tributes have poured in for the 125th birth anniversary of B.R. Ambedkar. Balchandra Mangekar sums up the impact and the ongoing legacy of Baba Sahib for future generations and especially in the creation of social equality and harmony. He was one of the builders of modern India. His contributions are so diverse. His knowledge about different areas of disciplines was so rich and deep that the present generation, in fact many future generations will have to understand Dr. Ambedkar in proper perspective. What happens is today that we are living in a situation of socio-economic and political turmoil. And what Dr. Ambedkar has thought always, there were four major issues that need to be brought to the notice and attention of the younger generation. In fact, the whole Indian society for that matter. One, Dr. Ambedkar, despite humiliation that he suffered throughout his life because of his caste, he never developed any kind of bitterness about the society. Second, his entire thought process was centered around the building of modern India. And from that point of view, he accepted the membership of the making of the Indian constitution. Third, his role obviously, as we all know, as the emancipator of the untouchables. And the fourth important point in today's context, that India is having very rich socio-cultural and religious diversity. And in that context, Dr. Ambedkar was thinking in much broader vision, in much broader perspective, what is called Indian nationalism. Ambedkar always saw the law as a friend. Let me say one thing about the famous Satyagraha called the Mahat Satyagraha in 1927. Valerian Rodriguez. There were two mobilizations that took place. The first mobilization when the Satyagraha is mainly constituted of the untouchables in the region and quite a few of them from Bombay City wanted to drink water from the tank and eventually they were beaten to pulp by the upper caste and they had to withdraw from the strike and again in December of 1927 there was another strike and the way Baba Sahib planned everything and took up the responsibility of keeping things within bounds because most of the people at that time wanted to break the law. Baba Sahib Ambedkar felt that law is something they cannot actually break because law was their friend. In 1927, Baba Sahib Ambedkar launched a Satyagraha by drinking water from Chaudar Lake. Change had begun. Baba Sahib's vision of liberty, equality and fraternity finds an outlet in this song. When Baba Sahib had touched the water of the lake, making it available to all, the songwriter asks, How did it feel? Tell us. The sun and the moon exist for all. Rain falls equally on all. Are we different? 